Hi, this is Date with Tech in association with Trescon, Launch Foundry, and Below the Fold. I have the pleasure of being joined by Max Denzer. Thank you very much for having us. It's a pleasure to be on the podcast. We enjoyed the Dubai AI Festival so far a lot. Thanks for having us. Fantastic. Just a reminder, we are at the Dubai AI Festival right now in a booth that we've set up to interview AI experts, thought leaders. Pretty and amazing booth, by the way. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm looking forward for this discussion that we're going to have. Let's start with a quick intro about yourself. Sure. My name is Max Dinzer. I'm the founder and CEO of Digital Bricks. Digital Bricks was founded roughly three years ago. Started as a startup in the moment we are a little bit scaling up and becoming a larger organization. We founded in Amsterdam. Quite funny story. My business partner is an Englishman. I'm a, I'm a German, and basically an Englishman and a German founding in the Netherlands. Now we are expanding into the UAE. This is our first year here present, first projects done, which we're going to talk about in a bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I used to work for Microsoft for many, many years as an enterprise solution architect, helping companies like the likes of Siemens, Rituals, and so on. And so Amazing. Forth. Uh, tell us about Digital Bricks. Digital Bricks is uh, basically a company that focuses on two aspects. One aspect is education and adoption, which we're mm -hmm. going to talk about today. And the second aspect is really innovation and implementation. So we are a Microsoft partner. We use Microsoft technologies to educate people on that stack but also to educate students or anyone that wants to learn around artificial intelligence. Is there a particular problem today that you're solving in education? Yeah. So first of all, we make AI education accessible quite easily because our courses are rather low priced and can be sold to anyone from large organizations that want to upskill their people, but also to individual students that want to learn it. And yeah, the biggest problem I think in AI education is, is the pace that it goes. Right. Once you record a course, it's outdated. So how do you educate people around that? And I think there we have a quite impressive solution, which is Daisy, our AI tutor, that helps simplify that problem and keeps learning up to date. And, and speaking of tutoring in schools, there's a lot of hype around AI in schools. But from your perspective, what's actually changing for teachers and students right now? I think time. As I said, a curriculum and a preparation that costs a teacher a lot of time. So we can save a lot of that and take that away. As well as, I don't know how it was for you in school, but teaching is always very standardized and never really personal. If I just look at my class back then, although it's now also a while ago, but I think we all became different things. Of course, a couple of them also worked in the IT. I became a CEO, luckily. But other people went to do sports, very different things. We are humans, we are individuals, and we want to learn more in a, in a personalized way. And I think that's what's going to change. And speaking of humans, how do we ensure AI supports learning without diluting essential human skills like critical thinking, creativity, and curiosity? Very good question. I mean, we are all sometimes very lazy people and it yeah. gives us quick results, but which why it's so hooking and why everyone talks about it. But it's a dangerous thing. And I think there is still the role of a teacher quite important to guide people to not just quickly go to the answer, but also think about what are the right questions to ask to challenge ourselves a little bit. Yes, we have a quick way to answer, but are we using it in the right way? And do we second think about it? Because AI can hallucinate, can also give out wrong things. So we, right. we need to stay active. We need to stay on top of it. And so you work closely with schools? Yes, uh, we do. In, on implementation. What does good AI integration actually look like in a live classroom setting? Could you give us a little bit of a, an example, something concrete that we uh, can relate to? I actually think a good AI implementation is nearly invisible because it helps the teacher to prepare that stuff. And it might be visible in using some of the AI tools to get there. But I do still believe in the traditional way of teaching, but having it AI enhanced. So what we usually do in a curriculum is we teach teachers on how to use artificial intelligence to do their work better, but also help them in define a curriculum that stays up to date. So I think it just gets more personalized and it's not like that AI is fully replacing the teacher. Right. And, and so is there any use case that uh, whereby AI can be uh, is utilized in a, in a live uh, classroom? Yeah. Let's say you need to write an essay and uh, you need to do that in a language subject. Yeah. Usually an essay is always something that is individual. Mm -hmm. uh, use AI to write it in an aspect like 
you have preferences, like you tell your story to express your, your, your personal aspect a little bit more. And I think there it can be quite great and gives you a lot of nice ideas on, on how you can influence your own writing or speaking yeah. style. So it, it basically, it can accelerate what you want to express. Exactly. Basically, and, and give you a, it's a tool to, 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 to help to express yourself. It's a tool. That's not in the school, but the pretty cool use case is we've been uh, working with the German Space Agency. Yeah. And uh, when we had to write the quote for them, so I had to write a quote, we dumped that quote and the idea into AI. And instead of our basic product names, like basic, standard, and gold, it turned it into base, space, and orbit. Oh. So just adjusting the quote and the product names made it so much more personalized. And yeah, the management person of that end said, your quote felt like it, it was tailor-made. And right. that some of that aspect that you can learn, and especially from a teaching aspect, that's the power of, of AI. Yeah, and, and so you, you mentioned tailor-made and, and we, we spoke about personalization as well. Are we at risk of, of over-automating? How do we avoid the trap of replacing, replacing judgment with algorithms, uh, especially in youth development? Yeah, very good question and also very risky area. As I already said before, don't see it as a solution for everything. Keep thinking. And that is something that we really need to be thinking about. So, yes, we can automize things, but we shouldn't automize things for the purpose of fully getting rid of them. I always like when a human is still in the loop and is responsible for it. So that is also what we do both in organizations, but also within the universities. I never believe that the teacher is going to lose his job. Mm -hmm. A mentoring role is quite important. Use it more as a tool to enhance and don't try to re replace your teacher. Right. And speaking of equity, if we want to talk about equity, how do we make sure AI is accessible and beneficial for all students? and not just digitally privileged. And I, feel, and I feel like this is a responsibility on many more stakeholders and not just perhaps digital breaks, right? Definitely. Now, I think that's a responsibility for all of us. Yeah. That's a mission we all should be on. And in essence, what we can do with AI is, of course, we can bring it down. I was just saying, don't replicate the teacher or try to reduce it. But maybe an AI tutor that is accessible through a simple chat interface that you can speak to can already bring that down to non-tech people and to have access to education which they maybe couldn't access before because they are not in Harvard or a super university. And now we can give that access to, to anyone. Right. Um, and that is that is quite powerful. In any language, of in, course. In well, any language right? as well, yeah. Um, um, and, you, and you said that, uh, you mentioned that this, this wouldn't necessarily impact uh, teachers or, or, their, or their jobs. Um, and so how do you see then the teacher's uh, role evolving in an AI-enabled uh, school environment? Um, and also, the, uh, also for a coach, right? Because education isn't just, isn't just for teacher, even for coaches and curators and analysts. Yeah. So I think the teacher remains in his role, but it's going to be evolving. So mm -hmm. AI is going to assist it. I quite often call it Batman and Robin principle. Uh, the teacher is Batman and yeah. Robin is your AI that assists you with yeah. it. So you have more a co-creator, co-teacher, co-mentor kind of role in both of it. Mm -hmm. You can give the students also more room to explore what they want to do instead of, okay, I'm the one that needs to guide them on that fixed learning path. But we can open up to more doors and right. I think that's, that's how that's going to change. Right. And have you come across any red flags? Any ethical red flags, let's say, as you uh, encountered or as you worked with different schools and implementation around uh, uh, red flags around the use of AI in, in education that um, educators and technologists should be aware of today? I think three things. Yeah. What I, I'm German. Germans like to have their rules and their structure. And I saw that some universities reacted, especially in the early days when JGPT started, teachers were like, oh, we need to forbid this. We need to stop this. Yeah. And don't do that because it's going to come anyway and yeah. it's the skill of the future so you should be teaching exactly that yeah. so that's the first red flag trying to stop ai try to embrace it the second aspect is really i think the aspect of over automating that we previously touched on don't expect it also now to be the super solution and that that it solves everything still be responsible in your teacher role and and do your job that's the second aspect 
And I think the third one is really more on a student kind of level. Mm -hmm. If I, as a teacher in my course, notice that people use AI, but they can't reason about it or can't explain to me why that text is standing there, if I just see a perfect JetGPT text, yeah. but I ask the student something about it and he cannot tell me what's actually in that text. So I notice that he hasn't thought about it, then we have a problem. Right. And that is, I think, a new responsibility for teachers to re-question, repurpose and find out. And yeah, how do you do that? This maybe finding out what kind of prompts they use, asking them why they did it this yeah. way. How did they reiterate on that question, on, on their yeah. problem? And now on, we spoke about some red flags, yeah, green flags, or better yet, what's one example that you thought was super cool, right? That gives you hope about how AI can truly elevate the learning experience. Now I need to be, of course, a little bit biased, but I think our innovation Daisy is for me the true example on how that should be going. Yeah. Because I've been doing trainings, e-learnings, um, and, and other stuff for Microsoft and large organizations. And the problem is that content gets outdated. I think we all in school learn about history and history is important as well, but I don't know how you felt it, but sometimes school felt like I'm not being prepared for what's currently happening. I'm yeah. being prepared for what happened in the past. And I think with Daisy, we can now change content in a pace and create content in a pace that we didn't have before and that gives us access to information from nowadays, not yeah. from the past. Yeah. Is Daisy available now? Daisy is available now, yeah. yeah. Mainly for organizations and institutions, so yeah. not yet for individuals. Yeah. We are working on that launch, so an individual can ask basically his own tutor. Okay, okay. And then finally, if you could redesign the school system yeah. from scratch, and I have a feeling that you would. <laughs> I hope we do. <laughs> in, this, in this AI era. Yeah. Right. What's the first thing that you would throw out? Content. Outdated content. It needs to be digitalized. It needs to be able to update in a certain kind of way and keep with face. That's, that's for me, the stuff that we need to replace. Fair enough. And what's the first thing you would protect? So you would keep? I think the role of a teacher. Because we all need our... And as I say, Batman and Robin principle, we all need our superheroes. Yeah. And although not everyone would describe the teacher as a superhero, but I'm sure there's someone that teach you something, yeah. like a mentor. And I think that's, that's what we need to keep. We need to keep also that human aspect of guiding someone and showing someone the path. Yeah, I think we'll always need someone who is older or has more experience to help guide us. And, and one example is as simple as if you see someone if you uh, are behind someone that already jumped on the water, you, you can you it's feel more, easy more, to jump, more yeah. confident to jump in, yeah. right? And I think that that will always help. Exactly. Max, thank you so much. It's been, uh, it's been really good. It's been uh, amazing. Very it's beneficial. been a pleasure. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. I, I hope you liked it. And yeah, happy to be on another episode of this podcast. Maybe Would love soon. to. Would love to. Let's do that. Good. Have, have a good day. You too.